Well hello, welcome to another video and this is a, a follow up to my networking video. Here's my rack. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about this device right down the bottom here which is my UPS. Now this is a CyberPower PR1000 uh, UPS and I have got a video on the channel if you don't know much about UPSs explains what a UPS and how it works but very briefly uh, UPS stands for uninterruptible power supply and the logic is that if there's a power cart or my fuse box trips or whatever we cut the power for some reason then anything that's plugged in the back of that will carry on working uh, until the batteries that are inside that unit uh, themselves pack up. Now, I have a few things plugged into this uh, UPS, my, all my critical uh, equipment. So, I have plugged in the back of that UPS. At the moment, I've got my uh, Synology NAS, which is immediately above it, just there. I've also got my router, which is there. My switch, which is up there. Uh, those are the main items that are on all the time. I've also, at the moment, got my Mac Pro and my monitor, my LG 4K monitor and the Mac Pro, which you can just see back there. Uh, the idea being that if the power goes, then I will be able to carry on working with all of that equipment. That's all my essential equipment. So I haven't got plugged in there, for example, the printer. It's not really essential. Uh, yeah, you get the idea. So. Uh, if I'm not here, then the computer will not be on. But these other devices that are plugged into the UPS will be. And crucially, the NAS, which is a RAID device, was, it will be plugged into the uh, UPS. And if the power goes, the UPS can have a little conversation with the NAS drive and say when its batteries are running low, and then the, the NAS will then cleanly close itself down. Because RAID devices don't like having the power suddenly cut. You can lose data and get data corruption so the this way this is really is the main reason for having a ups to be honest now i haven't actually tried the ups it's been plugged in now for a little while and i haven't tried it to make sure well to see what happens really when the power's cut but before we do just that very thing i'm going to press the button on the front here and we're going to get various pieces of information from the ups about uh, what it's doing and it's very and its state and you can see this here battery capacity is full the load capacity is actually quite low so there's not an awful lot uh, uh, happening as far as this uh, uh, device is concerned even though I've got quite a few things plugged into it so that's a good sign if I press the button uh, it then switches to the output voltage which is 237 uh, 238 volts 50 uh, ish Hertz don't really mind about that that's how many kilowatts it's actually uh, being asked to provide at the moment about 175 so <clears throat> let's move on to the really important stuff now this here is an estimate of how much runtime the batteries will have and you can see on here it says 61 and a half minutes so if the power was to cut I should if this the logic is right inside the machine be able to run on all these devices for about an hour and of course if I suddenly start rendering some 3d scenes or a lot of video or do something that's going to put a lot more power on my Mac Pro then that uh, time is obviously going to decrease but I should be able to get quite a bit of time before my uh, before I need to really shut down and most uh, power failures most outages that we have are relatively short it's most likely to happen if I'm honest if somebody burns a toast or something and I no, no, not burns a toast that's the wrong example. Um, that might set the fire alarm off. No, if um, if something trips, maybe if something causes the, uh, the the fuse box to trip, that that's more likely to happen than uh, the power company to cut the power. I know a lot of people uh, who will watch this elsewhere in the world will probably have issues with brownouts and uh, all sorts of times when their their power perhaps. Uh, isn't as reliable. We're quite lucky here in the UK, really, that we don't have an awful lot of downtime power-wise. Anyway, enough waffling. I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do for the purposes of this test is I'm simply going to turn the plug off to the UPS and then see what happens. Simple as that. And it's probably going to make a, some kind of loud noise, I expect, to warn me. So I'm going to go back here to the back of the rack 
and I'm going to switch off. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be brave. Right, ready? There we are. I've turned it off. Okay. So, we are now running on batteries. The NAS is still alive. The router is still alive. So is the switch. So is my Mac Pro and the monitor. They're all running off battery power. So let's push some of these buttons here and see what's going on. So we have, oh, it's going to beep beep. Um, oh, battery capacity has dropped down quite a bit already. Uh, so number of kilowatts. So estimated run time. That's actually jumped up to 126 minutes. Wow, okay, that's good, that's good, that is. What I'm gonna do also, I'm gonna nip over here to my, to my Mac, and you can see on the screen here, <clears throat> oh, I must do that beeping thing every so often to tell me we're running off batteries. Right, you can see here that, I'm gonna have a quick drink. There we go, recovering, recovering from the Logi. Now, this on here uh, says, this was, I uh, bought this screen up before I turned the power off. And this is the uh, interface for my NAS. And it's the one that's talking to the UPS. And you can see on there, the battery capacity at the time was 100%. And the estimated battery runtime there was 2,940 seconds, which is actually about 45 minutes, I think. But uh, I'm gonna close that. And let's just sort of, well, let's just change tab so it refreshes the information while well, I'm going to press the device information ah there we go so now it says to us that the status of the uh, UPS is that we're now running on battery power and the battery charge is at 77 percent and that now says 7500 seconds so that's good quick calculation yeah that's what it said on the front 125 125 minutes so I'm quite pleased with that because if it was to run for 125, I mean, that's good, you know, get a couple of hours of time out of that. So if the battery uh, are needed, if the power is cut for some reason, then it can run quite a few devices there. It's running my NAS, it's running uh, the switch, it's running the computer, it's running the monitor. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna have quite a decent length of time before I need to actually think about shutting the computer down. Now, of course, if the computer wasn't running, that time would be even longer, and the NAS would quite happily run and be accessible uh, for the, or the time until it needs to shut down would, would be that much longer. And as I said, here, really, very unusual to get um, uh, any kind of power cut that's gonna last that sort of length of time. So I'm really quite chuffed with that. Uh, yeah, that's good, that's really good. So what I'm gonna do now is just to turn the power back on oh, and I heard the little relay f switch over in in that in the in the UPS as the power came back on uh, the fan is still running in there but that's fine that's okay and if I come back over here I haven't refreshed this screen but do I have to because it still says on battery there so let me just randomly select another oh there we go we've got a little notification up here oh and uh, so if i go in here it says ups device connected to sherlock which is my the name of my ups sorry the name of my nas drive is sherlock so the ups device connected to sherlock has returned to ac power and presumably they are four minutes ago ups device connected to sherlock has entered battery mode so that's come up in the in the log files on the on the nas so if i go back to the device information here uh, we can see that uh, we're now connected again. The battery charge is, is 80% <clears throat> and we've still got this sort of large number of seconds, a couple of hours worth of, uh, worth of time, which is really good. Now, meanwhile, the, the fan has, <clears throat> excuse me, the fan has disconnected, has stopped on there and that's all back to where we, where we should be. And we've gone back to that. In fact, the battery capacity up there is already showing us full. Um, yeah, that's that's really, really good. So, and again, the minutes on there is showing higher than, than it was initially, showing us a couple of hours worth of runtime. 
Um, oh, there's some other screens that we didn't look at before. That's showing the load capacity. You see it's only 19%. So that is quite low. Uh, oh, there are battery capacity, 81. Now uh, there's the temperature, 30 degrees at the moment. Yeah, okay, that's good. I'm, uh, I'm quite pleased with that. So let's shut that up. Very good. Okay, so that was a little test of a UPS, just showing how that works and how if uh, there's a power failure for some reason here, then that will kick into action uh, all by itself without me needing to do anything. And I'll be able to run my computer and all the various devices until the power comes back. And I think um, that's given me a, a good bit of time to try and recover from an outage. So that's great. I hope you've enjoyed that very quick video, a little follow up to my recent networking series, which uh, if you're interested in me in seeing me put this rack together and purchase all the equipment and uh, to get all this set up, then there's a link to that on screen right now. Uh, and I'd love to know what you think about the, the setup and all the networking videos that I've put on here. Please do leave comments uh, and I do read them all, I promise you. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll uh, catch you in the next video. Thank you.